the Torah trip to an ancient underworld. Yo, what's going on? It's someone that's no one, and welcome back to the fifth report in Delirium Week. Today's report is sent in by Michael Wise. When this happened, 2002, the drug used was the Torah Stramonium, at a dose of 200 plus seeds, including pods, the right administration, orally, gender, male, age, 17, height, 6 feet, prior experience includes cannabis, LSD, mushrooms, 2CI, 2CB, and MDMA, the set, good headspace going in, and the setting, at a friend's patio. So for the fifth report in Delirium Week, Michael, a classic subscriber of this channel, came through and sent in a classic tutorial report that happened quite some time ago. Michael and his friends somewhat ignorantly decided to take a bunch of the Torah, and Michael slowly forgets taking it and goes about his normal daily task. Not only are a variety of hallucinations experienced, various physical effects, and repercussions faced, there's many reality-bending effects, especially concerning the realm of consciousness. So, I think everyone's going to enjoy this one, so without further ado, let's dive right into this. It started when a friend of mine told me about some datura he found growing down by the banks of the Willamette River. He was a Native American and warned me to only smoke it, saying if I did eat some seeds, it would be extremely dangerous, but I'd see the realm of death and chaos. I was very young, 17-ish, and very uneducated about psychoactive substances. I picked mushrooms a few times and tried acid a few times. I thought it would be a good idea to take a few friends down to the river to look for this wicked looking plant that was described to me by my native friend. We walked for about 5 minutes through wet underbrush and overcast sky until we saw a sandy clearing where only a few plants were growing beside the water. There right in the middle of the seemingly desolate sand dune was two 4 foot tall datura plants. We knew right away it was them from 20 or so feet away both scraggly with sharp pointed leaf and beautiful white trumpet shaped flowers. The flower pointed up to the dreary gray sky as if to tell us we'd found what we were looking for. One plant was green and had some bug damage and the other one was a beautiful purple on the stems. Both were creepy but intriguing. We were going to smoke the leaf and flower like we were told but when we saw the armored spikes that protected the fruit we decided to hell with smoking it we just take a few pods and eat a couple seeds. That was probably a bad idea in retrospect, but we were young and bored with the crap weather lately. Eventually, we ended up at a friend's house where we played some pool and I busted out the seed pods after I lost my game. I said why not try a few and see how it goes. The seeds were extremely bitter. At first, we only split half a pod with four people, so we ate about 25 to 50 seeds each. Waiting half an hour was difficult for me, but I did and then made the mistake to eat a whole pod because I wasn't feeling it yet. My friends ate more too and we watched a movie with Holly Berry in it, which I can't remember at all, but I think we forgot we ate the seeds because right after the movie, I realized I was supposed to be at work. I don't know how I drove to work, but before I left, my friends were telling me that they didn't feel good and that their throats were getting scratchy. I just thought they wanted to go to bed, so I got in my car and left, I guess. I don't remember driving to the pizza place I worked at, but I got there fine. My boss walked up to me and started telling my coworkers they should be more like me because I was always early or some shit, but he walked away too quickly to notice I wasn't acting quite right. I had forgotten I had eaten any detour at this point and thought it was a normal day at work. It was anything but normal. Seemed like 10 minutes had passed, and the next thing I know is I'm trying to place the pizzas in the brick oven to the one side so they don't disturb the bug nest on the other side. This felt so natural to me. I knew the bugs didn't want their pizza clogging up their layer that was made out of what looked like other dead bugs, mostly spiders and shiny black beetles. I did this for what felt like an hour before my boss saw what I was doing. He came up to me and started dribbling dirt and blood out of his mouth and I couldn't understand him. So I got upset 
and asked him what he was going on about. I only remember him freaking out and ripping my car keys out of my hands as he pushed me out of the door of his restaurant. I must have forgot that this just happened because I went right up to my car and tried to put imaginary keys into every hole I could find on my car. My boss later told me I was croaking like a frog and tossing pizzas on the ground about 10 feet from the oven. And then I was moving the imaginary pizzas around in the oven like I was trying to get them out, but really every pizza was on the floor in front of me. He also stated that a customer complained about seeing this happen and she tried to ask me if I was alright, but I just told her there was no fingernails on her pizza. Another co-worker said they saw me in the freezer trying to drink wine out of a big box, but instead of drinking it, I was spitting it on the floor. I remember only bits and pieces of the restaurant, but I remember having band practice after I was kicked out of work. There, I was treated completely normal by my bandmates, and I again had forgotten I was on anything. Band practice ended, and I walked home after talking to my drummer for a bit. He mentioned that he took some detoro with me, and that I was kicked out of work the day before. I remember walking home after band practice by myself, and I was able to walk into the ground as deep as I wanted to. I could see layers of time saved in the rocks and dirt, and I totally lost track of the sidewalk above me and could see no light from the moon, but I could see very well in the dark for some reason. I remember walking through the same cemetery I always walked through, but this time my perspective was from below the caskets. I saw signs from many of them, each one mentioning hell, like this way to hell, or hell next left. Every sign spaced in a way that by the time I forgot about the last one, another one would come into view. There were dinosaur and dragon bones, treasure and little bottles with glowing liquid of different colors to be found everywhere around me in the earth. I wanted none of it. I kept looking for water but found it would turn into sand in my mouth. The whole way home I was dropping cigarettes and having conversations with my drummer like he was with me, but... He went to a concert and later said he was talking to me while he watched the drummer at the show he was at. He mentioned things like throw sparks at people and open cosmic doorways with his mind. I eventually got home after finding a ladder out of the layers of dirt. I thought I was trapped in and walked onto my street where all my neighbors were out in their front yards where they were spraying blood out of their mouths onto each other like a bunch of fleshly blood sprinklers. I then went into my house where I found my dad looking very concerned. He started talking to me and I couldn't understand him. He was making clicks, beeps, and random laser sounds. I tried to talk to him, but later he told me I was croaking like a frog and he didn't understand me. I was asking him if I could have some water and he gave me some and I went to bed and woke up to what I think was the next day, but who knows. I later found out that my friends had horrible times and nightmarish visions while I was having an epic journey looking for water that wouldn't turn into sand. My friends were pretty mad at me for a while, as were their parents. My boss said he wasn't mad, he was just glad I left my car in his lot instead of driving, even though he wouldn't give me the keys anyways. He said I only wasted about 10 pizzas and that he could live with that. Him and my dad both knew what I was on when they saw me. They did it when they were kids too. I only wish parents would tell their bored ass little brats what the fuck is up instead of laughing it off like they did. One of my friends wasn't as lucky as the rest of us. He ended up in the ICU in a coma for two weeks, where he almost died several times. Did I learn my lesson from this experience? Nope. That was just the first time I tried a nightshade plant. It's many years later, and I can say my native friend was right. We should have just smoked it like he did when he was out of pot. The Torah doesn't fuck around, and if you just have to try it like I did, and still do, smoke it instead. It's much tamer. Peace out, Mike.